Now, Australia's economy is now growing at the slowest pace since the global financial crisis a decade ago. To get his thoughts on the disappointing results and also to discuss the big news of the AFP raids yesterday, we're joined in the studio now by Federal Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. Mr Frydenberg, good morning and welcome to News Breakfast again. Nice to be with you, Virginia. I just wanted to start with some questions about those raids. Uh, what, in any respect, did the government know about the AFP raids either on the home of Annika Smithhurst or on the ABC yesterday? Well, the Prime Minister has made very clear overnight that neither he or his ministers uh, knew in advance of those raids, nor did they instigate those raids. I mean, the free a free press is absolutely fundamental to a free society, and journalists should be able to go about providing their unvarnished opinions without fear or favour. But, Virginia, that should be distinguished from the independent work of the Federal Police and their investigations, which are arm's length from the government. Well, let me, let me read to you and to the viewers. These are the AFP guidelines. All matters where the execution of a search warrant may have a politically sensitive implication should be raised with the minister responsible for the AFP. Under present arrangements, the Minister for Home Affairs is responsible for the AFP. So, when Peter Dutton says he wasn't told, the government's confident that will hold true as the days and weeks now progress following these unprecedented raids. Well, both the AFP and Peter Dutton have made statements. Uh, and as I said, um, the independent work of the AFP has in this case been conducted at arm's length from the government. The security raids have drawn worldwide attention, um, not only because of what they did, but because they mark a big departure from recent history in this country. What's changed? Why is the AFP feeling so emboldened now uh, to embark on such intimidating raids? Well, I don't, I don't think anything significant has changed. In fact, we've always treasured a free press as fundamental to a free society. But this changes that, doesn't it? Well, look, there's been in the past raids on uh, you know, journalists' uh, places of work and residence, but. I can understand the sensitivities around this issue. The Prime Minister has acknowledged that overnight. He has spoken directly to editors around the country and he has said if there are issues that have come out of these incidents, um, then he's prepared to have a discussion about them. What does that mean, have a discussion about? What exactly is he prepared to change? Well, because protection for whistleblowers is central to this. We can bang on about press freedom, but if whistleblowers in a functioning democracy don't feel they can come forward in the national interest with information that is important for all the voters of Australia to know, then we don't have a healthy democracy. Does that concern the Prime Minister and you? But we also need the government to be working effectively, knowing that some of its most treasured secrets are being maintained. And the but that's the nature of whistleblowing, is that sometimes, sometimes not everything every government might be doing or aspects of the government might be doing are acceptable, and that's why in a free democracy you have whistleblowers. Should they be protected? Well, we ha well look, we have laws around that, and as you know, there were recent uh, uh, rules that came in to protect journalists with a public interest exemption, uh, and those changes were introduced by the Attorney-General. But we don't have shield laws, and they're the, they're, they're the that we need? Is it time for shield laws to be addressed as the Prime Minister seems to have indicated? Is that what he's saying? No, I, I'm not going to enter into that realm of legislative change other than to say what the Prime Minister said, which is if there are issues that came out of these incidents, there's a willingness to have a discussion. A quick couple more, then we'll move on to the economy. When, as we read today in nine papers, the then Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull in 2017 refused to allow the spy agency to monitor Australians, was that the right call? Well, look, again, um, we have laws in place uh, where uh, the ASD, the, the spy agency that you're talking about, uh, uh, have very uh, rigorous procedures around and protections around what they do. Uh, but I'm not going to start opening up new fronts in this debate. Are these raids the kind of Australia that you're comfortable with? Well, I want an Australia, the Prime Minister wants an Australia, the government wants an Australia, where we have a free press, uh, because a free press is fundamental uh, to our systems. But we also need to ensure that the AFP, who operate um, at arm's length from the government, go about their investigations as well. Let's move to the economy. Figure showed yesterday, as we mentioned at the top of the, our interview, the slow, slow growth for the last 12 months to the end of March, that it was 1.8 per cent, right. the worst since 2009. Your government's been in power for uh, many, many years now. We have stagnant wages, we have stalled growth, we have rising electricity costs. 
Tell me again how your government is the only one, as you kept saying during the federal election campaign, that can be relied upon to keep the economy strong? Well, when we came to government, unemployment was at 5.7%. Today it's at 5.2%. We've created more than 1.3 million new jobs. In fact, over the last year, around 320,000 new jobs have been created in Virginia, around eight out of every 10 jobs being full-time. We've maintained our AAA credit rating. Australia is in its 28th consecutive year of economic growth, but there are some real challenges. And those challenges are both international, particularly the trade tensions between the United States and China, but also domestically we've seen a slowdown in the housing market, the impact on dwelling investment. Uh, we've also seen slow growth in housing consumption. That's something where our tax cuts and the interest rate cut will make a difference. Uh, but also we have seen the impacts of flood and drought. I mean, farm GDP was down 6.8% over the last year, which is not insignificant too. You're not addressing my question, though, which was that the rhetoric was so strong during the campaign that, that any other, in particular the Labor Party, would just be disastrous for the economy. And look at this. We're, we're now back to the same levels as uh, the, the, uh, the advent of the GFC. Well, the reality is the Labor Party were taking uh, to the last election. No, 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 no. Let's talk about what you've you done or, you... or not done. Other... No, it's about the comparison. It's about but, but you, you saying... You do the comparison. That... That's exactly right. No, so it's you... about what you say you can do, which is keep the economy strong. But... And we simply don't have the evidence for that now. Virginia, with the greatest respect, I didn't raise the Labor Party, you did. Now, when they went to the last election, they were proposing a range of higher taxes. Now, that, this is exactly the worst possible time for those taxes, a housing tax and a retirees tax. It would have made the economy weaker. Well, guess what? We they, have a plan. They, they, they didn't win. You've got it. And the RBA, right. the RBA and business is begging you, begging the government to do something about structural economic reforms. That's what they're saying they need to see you do now. And that relates to industrial relations reforms, skills improvement, attracting investment and an energy policy. Is it time to do that now? Well, we, we laid out on April the 2nd in the budget a comprehensive economic plan to get Australia through these economic challenges. Now, first and foremost is $158 billion worth of tax relief, and that will be the first order of business when the parliament comes back. Secondly... I, I, I have to jump in there with the greatest respect, and that is they're talking absolutely separate to tax relief. They're talking here about structural reforms, well, and we really didn't hear much from the government about that at all during the campaign. Well, actually, the RBA governor has said that the government's tax relief will provide a boost to disposable incomes at an important time. A hundred billion dollars of infrastructure projects has taken half a century for the people of Melbourne to get an airport rail But the majority of that is down the track. It's not coming on for some That's time. That's actually not right. Um, we've got significant money going out the door uh, over the forward estimates to uh, build some of the nation building projects. Not the majority of it, Treasurer. Well, we need um, significant infrastructure spending. That's what we're committed to. 80,000 new apprentices and we'll continue to back business with a deregulation agenda, an instant asset write-off, getting big business to pay small business on time, $2 billion securitisation fund to increase access to finance. We have a range of measures, but we do face economic challenges and we are best placed to manage this uh, manage these these difficult developments. Well, well, that's what we heard, but we'll see if the reality measures up. But on that specific call by business uh, in, in particular on uh, the reforms they want to see, industrial relations reform and also an energy policy, what, what, what assurances can you give us this morning? Well, in terms of the energy policy, uh, we have uh, committed to introducing the recommendations of the ACCC. They did an extensive inquiry into the energy sector and found that governments needed to back new generation, particularly for industrial customers. So that's what we're doing. Default uh, prices so that customers get uh, clarity and transparency around their prices. And of course, with the industrial relations system, the Australian Building Construction Commission has been part of the measures that we've introduced that's seen a 40% reduction in days lost to industrial disputation I don't think that's since what, we've come together. I don't think that's what they mean by IR reform. I, I have to wrap up, but just super quickly, would you ever split the bill, the tax uh, bill, in order to allow the first tranche of cuts to go through? We're putting it as a package. and You won't split it? We'll put it as a package. We're not splitting it. Okay. And the Labor Party should get behind and support it because it's for low and middle income tax earners. Treasurer, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take you now.